The Lord be with you. We have a lot of announcements, but I'm going to start with Bill. And the only reason I came up front is because I want our audience at home to hear this as well. We need readers. We want you to be part of the church. Please help us. Uh, I have a sign-up sheet for reading uh, the scripture, and there's also a place on there for signing up for Advent readings and lighting the candles this year. So if, if you're able to help us out, please sign up and put your name on the list out there. We'd appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. Especially the Advent candle. That's I, I like, and, and uh, I like for that to be groups, you know, things like that. Bill's going to do the first one because that will be his last Sunday here. I don't know how many of you know that, but he's moving to Florida to be with his sister and her horses. <laughs> okay. Um, don't forget to pass the friendship register and sign it so we'll know that you've been here this morning. This evening, we're going to host a trunk or treat in our parking lot, and it promises to be a lot of fun for all those who are not watching their A1C. <laughs> And the Operation Christmas Child boxes are growing and could use some more. And then this is the day that we remember all those who have passed away during the past year. And Lisa Baldwin asked me to add to that list her niece, Debbie, who died yesterday, this morning. She died this morning from a massive stroke. So... She will be on our list in our memories. And all the other announcements you can read about in the bullet. And now may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. There you go. I was wondering if anybody was going to say that. <laughs> Set back down. Please stand <laughs> for the call to worship. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars. Let us worship God.
have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, yet we are justified by the gifts of God's grace through the redemption that is ours in Christ. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Almighty God, we come before you admitting we are complacent Christians, assuming that you agree with all that we wish and denying that you would challenge us to think differently. Because of this, we often sin without feeling guilty. Let us come to grips in the ways in which your thoughts differ from our thoughts, and your ways are not ours. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, Please bow your heads with me in prayer as we ask God for an illumination on the scriptures we will be hearing this morning. Let's pray. Just so that we hear your holy word, that we may truly understand, that in, in, that in understanding we may believe, and in believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and your glory in all that we do. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's first scripture reading comes from Matthew 10, verses 26 through 31. You can follow along with me in your pew Bibles in the New Testament portion on page 10. Listen now for the word of the Lord. So, have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will be not uncovered, and nothing is secret that will not come known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear the one who destroyed both soul and body in hell. Are not the two sparrows, are not the two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are more value than many sp sparrows. This is the word of the Lord. Now, those of you who consider yourself children, come up front with me. What grade are you in? Third? Four. Fourth? All of you are older than I was when I got this treasure chest. I think I must have been maybe five years old when my parents gave this to me. My brother has one just like it. And over the years, I've kept some special things in it. One of the things I've kept was this little piece of petrified wood that uh, I, found it, I found this in North Carolina. People don't realize it, but there's a little bit of petrified wood in North Carolina. And then, when I was in college, boy, I used to dress up. And one of the things I had was French cuffs. And this is a French cufflink with little horses in it. 
And what you'd do is you had buttonholes and you'd push it through and then you would turn this this way. Let's see if I can get it to work. And that would stay in there. And that was really fancy. And I thought I was really dressed up when I wore those. And then I have in here, because I don't like to wear green, but on St. Patrick's Day you have to have something green on. So my daughter-in-law, who's from Ireland, gave me this. So now I get to wear something green. And then in 19, I'm sorry, in 2021, I preached at a homecoming at a church I had served as an interim. And this man gave me this silver dollar, and it's a real silver dollar. It has one ounce of silver in it. So I'm keeping this in my treasure chest too. But then when I was probably a first grader, I caught a horn toad. Do you know what a horn toad is? A horn toad is a lizard that looks like a toad. All right. One of the ugliest things you'll ever see. I caught one. They're, they were big enough to fit in my hand. So I mean, small enough to fit in my hand. I caught it and I put it in this treasure chest. And my mother found out about it and convinced me that that horned toad would be much happier outside than in my treasure chest. But now, that thing is really ugly. Do you think God loves it? <laughs> we have a difference of opinion up here. <laughs> God loves it because God created it just like God loves the sparrow. If you had been listening, and I hope you had, to the scripture, you found out that the sparrow is worth a lot to God. All right, now I am going to show you something else that's in this treasure chest that is something that God loves more than horned toads, more than frogs, more than sparrows, more than horses. You want to look at it? Well, what do you see? Me. You see you. That's right. That is something that God loves more than anything else, is the children. Thank you. 
Testament. The scripture comes from... So instead of praying to our Heavenly Father, we pray to Almighty God, Gracious God, Redeemer God, God our Rock. And I want you to come back and pray this. In case you haven't noticed, I tend to vacillate. that as politically incorrect as it may be to refer to God as Father, it personalizes God. It helps us understand that God is a God who can address as if God were a parent. And remembering that got me to thinking about the ways in which children relate to parents. I guess more specifically, the way in which I related to my parents. It was a struggle. Both ways. In fact, several years ago, my mother laughingly said to all four of her children, I was the hardest to raise. It was a struggle, both ways. There were times when I was told to do something, to behave in some way, and to my parents' credit, they always gave me a reasonable explanation, but reasonable didn't always suit me. Why do I have to be in Finally, after refuting argument after argument, my mother or my father would, in desperation, say, Do it because I said so. <laughs> Why do I have to carry out the fact that you didn't make it well? Do it because I said so. There are times of time when the parent simply throws up their hands and says, Because I said so. When we know something is right, but we don't have the words to explain it to the child, at least words that they would understand. So we take our three-year-old to the doctor, where they're given a shot, even though the child doesn't understand immunization. But we know what's best for them. 
So we force it on them, even when they struggle against us. But then they start struggling with the things they see that we don't want any more than they do. When a relative they love dies, and they ask why. When their closest friend moves to another city, and they ask why. head in the sand and ignore difficult issues. Jacob becomes Israel. The name means one who struggles with God. Think about what that means. Most concept of gods or gods are gods that are so remote that they are inappropriate. A pagan might have a god that Some put their gods in active thought. Talk about an unapproachable God. Pagans come up with gods that are far away and seem to be always trying to mess with us in haste. Gods that cannot be approached by humans. The God that Jacob ran into one night thousands of years ago was a God who could be encountered. But not only that, this God initiates the counter. The God that came to Jacob comes to us. And when God comes to us, it can be a struggle. Maybe not so much the way that Jacob struggled with God, maybe more the way parents and children struggle. I have a friend whose wife died suddenly and has found himself surrounded. Pagan doesn't have to ask these questions. Pagan understands that the gods are almost always out to get them. And about the only thing people can do to stop it is to bribe the gods with money or sacrifices. It becomes a superstition. Do the right dance, say the right words, and the gods will leave you alone. An atheist doesn't have to ask these questions. The atheist just chops these things up to random selection. Faith, the intersection of cross purposes. It's only we in our tradition who struggle so much with our God. It is we who stand before God and say, I don't understand. Or, why me, God? There's another way in which we struggle with God. It's when we want God to think. Sermon on the Mount and got to the passage where Jesus says to turn the other cheek and the one where he says pray for your enemy. The woman in the class said can I say something? And I said sure. She said the person who shot and killed my husband eight years ago got out of prison this week and I'm angry. If I had a gun and could find him I'd shoot him myself. And Jesus wants me to pray for him. She was We deserve all we have. And score four we said that in the Jesus tells us we are to take care of the poor. And we struggle with God. One of the wonderful things about this faith of ours, and it's been one of the wonderful things of the faith since the time of Jacob, 
is that when God can explain it in a way that we can understand or won't explain it, God will come to us and let us wrestle, let us struggle with God. Christian means to be like Christ. That's a bunch of malarkey. As I look over this group of Christians gathered here, and the one behind the pulpit as well, I don't see a single one of us who comes close to being like Christ. The real definition of Christian as a noun is simply one who believes in Jesus Christ, an adherent of Christianity. That's too bad. I wish it meant the same thing Israel means. I wish it meant one who struggles with God. And I hope you realize what a wonderful gift that is. Gracious God, never let us forget that no matter how bad the time you allow us to wrestle with you. And when we finish, you will call us Israel. For we too strive with you daily. Yet let us remember that as we struggle, we struggle with one who loves us as he loved Jacob. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Be seated. Before I walked in here this morning, I knew that we were going to be All Saints Day, but it slipped my mind to see the Tuesday of this week. And that's why we have the necrology listed. God of the living and the dead, as we approach All Saints Day, we remember, we remember in prayer those whom we remember who moved into the church triumphant this past year. As we have looked down the list, we have seen those identified as mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, all sorts of kindred, folk and friends. We lift up our hearts in thanksgiving for the times that we have shared with them, for the love we have given to them and received from them. And we celebrate this morning with the fond memories we have of them, memories that now bring smiles to our lips and joy to our hearts. And Lord, we cannot, Lord, we can often forget that all who call upon you in the name of Jesus the Lord and the Savior are sanctified, are saints. And we lift up those who are members of the Christian community who still walk upon the earth. May we be an encouragement to our fellow Christians when they stumble. Let us be the arms to lift them up. And when we stumble, may we welcome the arms that come to lift us up. And we thank you, Lord, for that cloud of witnesses that have given us so many stories of faith and who have taught us to trust in you. May we shine your light to future generations that they might look back on our example and feel the same trust and conviction that we do now. Remembering the good times of the past and the good people who have guided us, we pray for this country. The events of this past week have reminded that we live us reminded us that we live in a difficult time when divisions among our people seem to bring about unmerited violence. And we pray that the time may come and come soon when decisions made by people who seek the benefit of all rather than themselves, themselves and that anger and prejudice might cease to determine the actions Spoken with our lips and the prayers we lift up to you in the silence of our hearts, we pray through your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Bless this day. Give us our debts, as we forgive our debts, and lead us not into Amen. At this time, let us give to God. God.